Well, hello there, everybody. He is me, Feiss. How's it going? It's a Monday night update. It's football and it's hockey. We got a lot to talk about in the football game, so I may as well start off with football here on Monday, November 8th. So the Steelers managed to pull out a win, 29-17. I, I'm a little bit down on football, but not entirely, and I'll explain why after watching this game. So I was paying attention to all the officiating in this game. And a part of me wants to say that some officials need to be fired in this game. I got the I got the feeling while watching this game up until about the third quarter that somebody somebody was somehow trying to make the Steelers win this game by more than seven points. Is what the calls look like. There was a, a touchdown call back to Jimmy Graham for a non existent penalty. There was a taunting call that that let the uh, the Steelers continue a drive that did not really look like taunting. And then if you watch the official that threw the flag for the taunting call against uh, uh, the the white guy with the with the blonde hair and tattoos that got called, I can't remember his name. But uh, the official actually backs up into him almost to hit him when he's coming by. If you look at if you really look at the replay of what happens, even though they didn't, they didn't call him for hitting an official, it, it looked like. It looked like the officials were not okay with the Bears winning this game. And what made me start laughing was was when the Bears have a fumble recovery for a touchdown, things that they can't overrule, and this became a game. I was like, what is going to happen here? I was like, if they're continually trying to make the Bears cover, and then the Bears kick, uh, sorry, the Steelers cover, and then the Steelers go kick a field goal to only be up by six, all of a sudden that kind of kills that. And then the Bears come down and score and take the lead, and I just... It felt like the game wasn't on the level because there were too many calls that were going against the Bears and they were still staying in it anyway. That I, I just got I got soured on doing this algorithm. And this has happened in the past when I've I mean there was that, that penalty with the New Orleans playoff game uh years ago where where the sports books actually refunded people's money that bet on the Saints because there was a clear uh, pass interference call that wasn't called late in the game in the playoffs. Um, there, there's there's some things that make you wonder how how susceptible these guys are, you know. Um, so I just was I was kind of souring on that, and then the, the Steelers did come back and and win. They didn't cover, and the, the announcers were kind of calling out the poor officiating while it was happening in the game, and then it stopped in the fourth quarter. I mean, for the most part of the fourth quarter, it, it didn't happen when I thought there would need to be calls. There weren't, and they let stuff happen. So, I mean, if it is a problem, which I know it's been a problem in basketball before, it's one of the reasons why I soured on NBA, and I, I didn't rush to do NBA because you've had officials that have been, you know, shaving off points in games. I mean, people have been, like, it is, it is a proven fact, and there's been testimony, and there have been all kinds of things that, that are in court about that, and... So it just makes me wonder about football in such a big game. And, and if if it's going to be not on the level, then well, what are we really doing here? We're just trying not to predict what the actual score of the game is going to be, but we're trying to predict who's paying off the officials and what they're going to make them do. And that's a totally different algorithm, and it's not really based on stats. So I, I really applaud the announcers for essentially calling out what looked like BS officiating and then kind of seeing that BS officiating essentially slow down or stop in the fourth quarter. I mean, maybe we could have an impact if we all really, really complain and, you know, we have cameras and we have we have the ability to, like, see what really happened and to go back and, and make these calls right. And I hope that we continue doing it because the integrity of the game is what matters. When you have so much betting going on, if we're not going to have integrity in the game, we're going to have officials clearly doing stuff that's that's not that's not accurate. Um, those officials need to be fired and we need to get that out of the game so that we can all appreciate the true sport and fair sport. It's if it's not fair, it's not fun. The, all that being said, I just it, it just upset me a little bit. You watched that game. I just I wasn't happy with what I saw, but it did at least end okay. I feel like. So, all that being said, um, you get a higher scoring game here. Bears defense sucks. That was expected. How they come back? You know, they needed a fumble recovery to do it. Um, I, I don't know how the Steelers end up pulling off these wins. I mean, they, the Bears just. Shortened the field goal and missed it, missed it at the end, but they were too far out. But they almost, almost won. Uh, the house would have come down if they had won. So that's that game. We, we end up seven and seven for the week, and um, 
And we you know we'll just I'll do some updates next week. I'll start to incorporate the defense a little more into the scoring. I have some ideas about exactly how to do that um, with the formula. So we'll keep on keep it on. But um, I'd say the more the more we pay attention to the officiating and we call this stuff out, the better it's probably going to get because of what I just said. Right now, let's talk about hockey. Um, I don't think hockey was rigged tonight. Um, so again. Again, for like the fifth time in six days, I think, the pick of the day goes down. Florida goes down, and I, I, I didn't bet I'm in a state where I can't bet. I'm, I'm in North Carolina right now, and um, uh, so I can laugh at this, but I was going to bet it before I left Virginia. I thought, no, I'm like, forget it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like, hockey's, hockey's having trouble. And so when, when I looked at this game, I didn't watch any of it, but when I looked at the shot totals, apparently – Florida outshot the Rangers 45 to 18 and still managed to lose this game four to three. Shesterka played good. It just reminded me as a hockey player that that hockey is a game where that can happen. And it's unlike baseball, it's unlike even football in a lot of ways. You gotta have a lot of turnovers and accidents in a football game for a really a team that's really getting pounded the whole game to win. It can happen, but it's much more rare than it is in hockey. And I have spoken to people that, that have bet professionally before and I've had discussions about hockey with them. And I had a guy tell me once, a guy a guy that I trust the most actually, he told me once, he said, bet the underdog every game. And I was like, why? He goes, he goes because because it's it's a crapshoot. Because hockey is is just an extremely difficult game to pick because there's just bounces and Sometimes those bounces go in, sometimes they don't. And I don't know what happened in this game, but I guarantee Florida didn't get the bounces and the Rangers did. So what does that say about the, it's just, It just says that you know we win one game here, we win the Washington and Buffalo game. I'd say maybe predicting goals and over. I don't want to say anything about hockey. It's tough. It's just, it's just extremely tough. And I'm not going to go around and advertise. You don't see me putting in these videos when they're just hockey videos like, hey, send me money for this. Because it's not winning consistently. It's not like some of the other algorithms I've done. And I, I'm i going to keep doing it because I really like it. But I am not going to expect more than like <laughs> more than winning half the games mathematically. So I, I want to come to that kind of conclusion even though I've done better that last year previously because this stuff can happen. If the algorithm's correct, essentially, and Florida is a much stronger team, and they do outshoot the Rangers almost three to one, and they still give up four goals. I mean, Spencer Knight played because Bobrovsky was hurt, so maybe it was a. There's just a lot of non-numerical factors that probably go into hockey, and I'll keep working on it. But uh, don't expect to win every day, clearly, and apparently, don't even expect to win half the week. Um, that's what it's saying. But we'll keep doing it, obviously. Then there's college basketball, which starts tomorrow. I don't have a follow-up right now. I haven't done work on it yet, um, but I will have something for tomorrow. And then um, we'll be using last year's stats for the first week or two while they start playing some games. But that one, that one, you won't hear me complaining about that one the way I complain about hockey. College basketball is very skewed games, and you find uh, reasonable lines, and, and there's a lot to play and a lot to talk about every day. Sometimes there's like 80 games in a day. It's, it, it, it is uh, – it's amazing. I mean, as a matter of fact, there's so much data. Yeah, there's something else I want to finish on, actually, for those who watch the rest of this video in a second. Um, there's so much data that I actually need help. And, and what I was thinking about was I wasn't really going to get on this route tonight, but I want to do this anyway. So with the football algorithm, in order to make this thing perfect, we, we need to make sure that we have all the rosters perfect. And I don't know that. I, I don't know who's been cut and who's a free agent and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the roster list, which is right over here, and I'm going to post it up in a live Google Sheet, and I'm going to put the link in the next video I do, and I'm going to let everybody crowdsource the editing of making sure that we have complete rosters and that we have everybody on the correct team and we have all players that are cut should be cut. Uh, this is something that everyone can help out with that, that cares about this rather than me missing stuff and causing it to affect the projections. So I'm just going to provide this entire list and we'll all just crowdsource and edit it um, and make sure that it's accurate. Because then it's going to be easy to import into here and then we'll be able to have more correct scores because uh, we'll know who, who's on the correct teams. So that's something we're going to do before week 10, which is coming up now. Um, before Thursday, we'll get all that sorted out. It's only Monday night right now. 
So that's the update for Monday night. I put out a video about my fantasy thing for NHL nine mans. If you care about that on FanDuel, you can have that thing for free. I'm just give away everything for free. It's freaking free Monday. Um, but uh, yeah, so so watch out for hockey, but get ready for college basketball and. And then we'll see about NBA. I'm still not at a thousand subscribers yet, so I'm not. I said I was going to launch it at a thousand subscribers, which is like thirty short. So tell your friends. All right. Good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning. We'll be back tomorrow with a video.